Welcome back to another video here on Madden24 and today we're going to be doing our very first rebuild of many and that first team is going to be the Detroit Lions, a team that maybe in real life you wouldn't really consider a rebuild team anymore but in Madden they still definitely qualify and hell if they continue where they left off last season this could be a team that doesn't need a rebuild for some time as near the second half of the season their offense could pretty much go toe-to-toe -to -toe against any team in the league, and you felt like they could just put up points left and right. But the problem was that defense. Obviously, they started to improve a little bit on defense in the second half as well, but it was just too much of a problem early on, and uh, they just barely missed out on the playoffs. And like I said, I don't know if that's a team that you would have wanted to see in the playoffs. You know, a team like the Packers, they were one win away, which obviously got denied by this Lions team. Uh, you would not really care. You're like, ah, the Packers, they suck this year, but... The Lions, they were a very good team that was not a great record. They're not a bad record, but you know what I mean, not playoff worthy. Obviously, a couple of additions, uh, the main one being Gibbs, actually, not even Montgomery. Montgomery is a decent name, but Gibbs is definitely the better of the two, in my opinion, going forward. What are you going to get from Montgomery, you know, uh, injury-wise? And, you know, he's not the most versatile guy, whereas Gibbs definitely is. And so far in preseason, seeing that shiftiness, Amon Ross St. Brown, one of the better uh, receivers in the league. Jared Goff, super underrated. He can definitely get the job done. There's a lot of teams in the league that would love to have him as their starter. Laporta, the super athlete out of nowhere, just like, holy crap. And he just flew up the boards, and uh, the Lions took him pretty high. Really solid selection there as he can obviously uh, get down the field, uh, get vertical with that, what is it, 86 speed? Probably should be a little bit higher than that, to be fair, but... Uh, they obviously lost TJ Hawkinson. It benefited both teams. The Vikings definitely got a really good tight end. And then you know, the Lions got decent value back, I suppose. Uh, offensive line, definitely one of the better offensive lines in the league. I think they're starting to get recognition for that as well. So it's not like, oh, no one, you know, thought of it. But, you know, they got some really good players. You know, some of the top players at their positions in the league on the offensive line. But obviously wide receiver, a little bit of a problem, especially with Jamison Williams out for those six weeks. But hopefully we can get him back on track and just dominate him once he comes back. Um, I don't know what scheme this is, by the way, because all the players are listed as left end and right end. They don't really have the DTs necessarily to play a 4-3, but at the same time, if they're all, if Hutchinson and Houston and all of them are listed at left and right end, would this not be a 4-3? I, I honestly don't know. I moved Branch over to corner uh, in the slot because I just didn't need him at safety. We had two starters and even Tracy Walker as the backups, fair enough. Jack Campbell, pretty damn good start to the camp and uh, Campbell. <laughs> uh, and to, uh, well, preseason. Uh, obviously killed it early on. And can I just can I please stop, stop going over? Uh, but not the most athletic, but really good excel. Fair enough, uh, block shed, 72 zone, and man, these numbers. It's just weird. Like, I've seen a couple people say they actually like the numbers. I think to those couple people, you're absolutely insane. But hey, that's more power to you. The two corners, real life, pretty good. Pretty good additions. In-game, completely useless. I'm going to be honest with you. Sutton is just, he's useless in-game. Same with Mosley. They're just too old. And it just keeps skipping over. I got to be patient. Got to be patient. But too old, not that fast, super low overalls, normal dev. You're really not getting much out of those. And then, of course, Brian Branch, the rookie, is unfortunately insanely slow. So safety, slot corner, those are really his only options if we're going to try to keep this as realistic as possible. But, yeah, this is uh, a team that in Madden could definitely use some work in real life has slowly built themselves up a very good roster. As of right now, we have Montgomery at number one, but Gibbs at the number two. And obviously, I haven't simmed any seasons, so I have no idea what's going to happen here. You know, if is the backup going to play okay because he's a decent backup? Is he going to suck because he's a backup no matter what? Are there certain playbooks that dominate like usual? I don't know. We're about to find out together. So right now, these uh, servers are real painful to be moving around the menus, clicking in and out. But if this video gets to 500 likes, I will post another rebuild by Friday. I'll call it by Friday. That is a lot to ask for. But 500 likes, we'll have another rebuild on Friday. I don't know what team, so let me know in the comment section below. But let's get into it. Plenty of rebuilds to come, and I'm not exactly sure when I'm planning on that Texans franchise. Hopefully by the time I do decide to upload it that no one else has taken them. Uh, but planning on maybe Thursday, perhaps? I'm not sure. But uh, 
Let's get in on this rebuild. I think if we win one Super Bowl, we're going to call it. But we may never win a Super Bowl, so who knows? Also, last thing, I'm not going to change any of the draft class stuff. At least until for, oh my lord, that is like lagged or something. I don't even know what that is. Uh, until we know what the draft classes are like. You know, if we were to look back on Madden and say which class or, you know, what, what positions should get boosts. Um, probably tackle. Tackle would probably need a little bit of a boost. And I would say edge rush for sure would need boosts. But uh, we don't know what the, the draft classes are like in this Madden. So I'm not going to touch any of that until uh, we kind of get a good feel for it. There's also a regression slider, uh, which obviously I'm not going to touch that either because, once again, I don't know what the settings are kind of like. Uh, I do know that running backs kind of lasted too long last Madden, so that would be something that I would probably push uh, a little bit over to the right to make them regress a little faster because that's – we know the big question these days. The conversation is 29, 30-year-old running backs. GG, see you later. Yeah, lack of play time because he's gambling, even though this is preseason, so I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter. So I'm pretty sure I've seen him in preseason, so – but yeah, I mean, maybe stop gambling. All right, Aiden Hutchinson got one of two for camp standouts and has 10,000 XP. It looks like the start of a 007 movie. Look at him in his little, like, bullet barrel hole thingy. Hey, look, Derek Barnes is now start of Elmetre. We might technically have all our linebackers set, plus the 20k. The season's not really going super well, but Aiden Hutchinson, at least, is now superstar. Ooh, that that gold shimmer from the uh, the superstar dev is kind of filthy. I'm also really hoping the lag that is uh, in the game right now isn't terrible UI, and more just so the fact that I'm on, uh, what is that called? that I'm on online instead of doing an offline uh, franchise because this is so delayed. It's pain. 84 mil on the negotiations. Uh, right now, not looking kind of crazy. I, I don't really hate the contracts that we see here. I think we can afford pretty much everyone if we want to keep them. Sewell's on a... Wait, what? Oh, my God. Fifth year... Oh, so the fifth year option you can kind of do like early on or is that just like showing me for when it actually shows up? I don't know, but that's that's kind of cool. I was kind of scared. I was like, oh, no, they're they're offering me contracts now. They're like, you want to take this deal so I can stay around? It's like, oh, Lord. But obviously, CJ Gardner-Johnson, boom. I don't want... I think I'm... I don't know if I want to turn off player motivations because I think they're really dumb nine times out of ten, maybe even like 99 times out of 100. But at the same time, without the player motivations, it feels like it would be really easy to just resign everybody. So... I don't know. I'm still debating it. I'm still debating it. I don't know what you guys think, but I I really... Wow, no sack so far as a starter. I really just think that the motivations and the stadium abilities are just so bad of ads, which, I mean, that's kind of why they uh, have the option now to remove them, which, fair enough, fair play to them. I'm thinking I might go for it and get rid of them because, like I said, I just think it's so dumb the way negotiation... Like, some motivations, like warm weather state, fair enough. Uh, values, financials, that should be the number one, right? Like nine times out of 10, that's usually what it is. So having to pay him way more because he's like, I don't want to be on the, the south of the sun when it's seven o'clock. It's like, okay, I'm sure this, okay, cool. All right, looking at the teams that are currently kind of running it right now, a lot of the same kind of teams. Cowboys, the Raiders have had a pretty good playbook for a while. The Bengals have had a pretty good playbook for a while. Bills are like hit and miss. Ravens win, but they don't put up good numbers. Colts don't really pay attention to them too much. The Eagles usually are pretty bad, so the fact that they're six and three is nice. Uh, Niners, Texans, Chiefs obviously are always going to dominate. Uh, Buccaneers, uh, what about the Falcons? I mean, there's no like god tier team that usually does insanely well in sim that sucks all of a sudden. Kind of the Giants, they've done pretty well in sim, but as you can see here, we're struggling super hard right now. Now, no one really has a whole lot of high hopes for the NFC North, but I feel like maybe better than this going forward. 6 and 11. I ended up changing the scheme to the um, Cincinnati Bengals to start. And, of course, they changed everything up again. So I accidentally clicked schedule. I guess I'll show you guys. I don't think I really have a reason to suck early on. Pause. Major, major pause. But I suppose maybe for a better draft pick. But in general... Yeah, I was kind of thinking that maybe this team would be a little bit better, especially on offense. Wasn't the case. Kirk Cousins, top three. Uh, Jaden Reed, top three for wide receivers. And this scheme needs a change. Holy crap, Jared Goff was terrible. 
David Montgomery was decent. Gibbs, I mean, I had him as the the backup for everything. Third down running back, power back, slot receiver. Uh, this was a garbage season. I have not seen one this bad in some time. Jaden Reed doubled our yards for any of our best guys. Aiden Hodges could go to X-Factor, to be fair. Interceptions, Brian Branch, maybe rookie of the year. That's pretty good, actually. Um, fair enough. Kick return touchdown for Gibbs. Like I said, I put him all over the place. Let's take a 30th in offense. So from like one of the best offenses to 30th, according to EA, and then 19th in defensive. Let's take a look at MVP. Obviously, it isn't going to be uh, any of our guys. Holy crap. I don't know if I like this. Everyone's face is so tiny. You know what? The fact that I don't have to scroll down, I lied. I do like it. It's really hard to get used to, but it's uh, it's definitely better. You can see your team and all that. Defensive player of the year, number four. Rookie of the year, number six and seven. Defensive rookie of the year, Jack Campbell. Forgot about him. Brian Branch at number two. Best QB not on the list. Best running back not on the list. Best wide receiver not on the list. Best O-line number three. Best D-line at number three. Best linebacker not on the list. Best DB at number four, and then best kicker at number 10. Wasted season, though, as we missed the, the playoffs. But maybe you got a couple of dev ups. You got rookie of the year with uh, with good old Jackie. So I have no idea what... Oh, it's the Eagles versus the Ravens. I have no idea what the kind of thresholds are for like, oh, I got an achievement, win rookie of the year with one of your players. Nice, 100 gamer score. That's sick. Um, but I have no idea what the like thresholds are like for dev ups. So maybe we got some, maybe we didn't. The Ravens win the Super Bowl by quite a bit over the Eagles, 31 to 13. Let's take a look at our potential dev ups, if any. Probably all on defense, honestly. Uh, offensively, it does not look like we got a single one. And then defensively, we got Eden to X Factor, Campbell to Superstar, Sutton to Star, and then nobody else went up. But that's fair enough. Aiden Hutchinson went from Star. To freaking X Factor, Sutton. I mean, it really doesn't matter, but our man's is star development trait. Uh, what did he do to get star development trait? Let me look back at that. Because that is kind of like. I don't feel like he had a good season. Am I wrong to think this? I feel like he had a pretty bad season. Let's take a look. Maybe he had more interceptions than I thought, or a bunch of tackles or something. Uh, 85 tackles is quite high, so that could have been the trigger. Two interceptions, nothing really else. So it's got to be tackles for corners that also give dev ups, which is something. I don't know if I would say that's a good thing that you did well because you tackled someone. All right, so here is the fifth-year option. Honestly, is it even worth it? $20 million, his re-sign interest is kind of low, so it would... I think no matter what, you're going to pay him a lot anyway, so let's just get the fifth-year option. Guarantee he's still here for another year and then, you know, figure it out after that. Um, anyone else, I think... Uh, Riley Patterson was top... 10. Don't know if that's really hard to do. It's a whole conference after all. I'd be willing to do a two year. We know that it's really hard to find kickers. So, Riley Patterson, two year, what is it, 5.4? I think that's fair for both sides. But what is not fair is how long the sim takes. Watch this. Clicking it now. I don't have like a timer or stopwatch, but I don't really need it because I'll be able to just go off watching how slow it. Okay, that was really fast. Of course, way to show me up, EA. The one time it's fast, it's like, oh, let's let's expose the game. Nope, I got exposed. Also, I didn't even pay attention. Like, I wonder if the logic for like letting players go is better or not. I don't know if that's the case. We'll find out. Luvu is an option. We need edge. We already have a slow edge, so why not get another one? <laughs> uh, but there's a couple of names here that you you know, wouldn't expect to be here. Like running back, I'm not gonna judge. Even though Austin Eckler actually, no, maybe it was another one-year deal. Either way, he's an X-Factor. But Mike Williams, superstar, very unlikely. Very unlikely. Wilkins would be a great fit, but I feel like he got a contract. And then Josh Allen is a guy that I think maybe even in real life isn't guaranteed, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, how come I can't? Wait, how come I can't sign him? He had 15 sacks. There's no way they'd let him go. But he is a free agent. Um, negotiate. So I somehow broke the game. Maybe they just couldn't get a deal because the money wasn't right. I don't know. But I am broke in edge rushers. So I'm willing to offer. Don't know if that's going to work. And man, that is so slow. Um, we're comparable to the Titans. So why not just keep it on there? Maybe we get them. Maybe we don't. Corner wouldn't hurt. But I don't know if there's going to be anybody halfway young. Fulton kind of. He's actually not a bad. This actually feels like a very... Detroit Lions signing as of late. So I'm actually going to offer him that two-year, probably about 10. And uh, if he joins us, that would actually be a decent little addition because he's still pretty young, could develop, 
anyone else. Linebacker, there's a couple of options, but I don't think we absolutely need one. I think we can live with what we've got. So I'm probably going to leave that out. DT, D-line in general, probably something we need, but I don't think I want to spend $20 million per year or whatever the hell Wilkins was asking for, and it was red interest anyways. Uh, always Terrence Steele in free agency. Ruiz is a free agent. I'm trying to think if we need a guard. I'm going to have to take a look. Ruiz the free agent. That is interesting. Uh, where the hell did our right guard go? Do we have like Vitae starting or something over there? Well, I'm going to go for uh, Cesar Ruiz if he's there. Still probably going to draft lineman for the future because Jonah Jackson's on like a two-year deal. And I I mean, even that is debatable that I shouldn't maybe have just let him go because he's lower overall. But at worst, we just, you know, replace him the next season or something like that. And he's just a quality backup. Uh, but I think we're going to try to get Ruiz here, even though other teams want him. He's very interested in joining us, though. So if he does like a a four-year 30, I mean, that's not bad for either side. I'm pretty happy with what we've got. I really hope we get Josh Allen, though. Edge, I don't know if it's hard to get still, but it was in previous Maddens. Oh, the Raiders are like, hell no, you ain't getting them that easily. Okay, maybe we do like something a little on the more crazy side, a two-year 20. Which would come out to like 10 mil per. But since it's on a two year, I can live with it. Okay, what the hell even happened? Did they pull their offer because we're smoking them? I don't know. But hopefully we get Allen. That's the name. Don't wear it out. All right. Yes! We actually got Allen. Normally, it, you, we'd have to have like three bars higher than the next team. We don't hate that. Uh, eighth best left outside linebacker is going to be playing on the defensive line. Playing edge. Cost us a little bit of money, but I think absolutely worth it. Normally, we pass on a guy like him in previous Maddens, but we're desperate here, and I do not want to try and uh, get an edge rusher in what could be impossible uh, class because, once again, previous Maddens, edge, not super easy to get. What draft picks do we have? 11, 43, 69, 75. So we got some okay draft picks on top of it. So we're all right. I think DT might be one of our biggest needs to replace, actually. Wide receiver wouldn't hurt, but I don't think it's that up there. And I think Gibbs is going to get the start next season. Has got, you know, Montgomery was okay, but didn't really take the run game to the next level. I mean, we didn't take anything to the next level. Um, but quarterback always on the mind because Jared Goff isn't the youngest guy in the world, but he's young enough for NFL level. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be mainly DT and corner for us, I think, in this draft. Here we are with pick 11 in the draft. The Saints are sitting at number one, and they go quarterback – don't know where we're going to be getting at number 11. I'm trying to get a corner, I think, but I don't know who's going to be available. There's one that looks really good. Didn't want to trade up for him, though, because I just don't think we should be trading up when we have so many needs. Man, this menu lag is going to make rebuild so tough. And he's there. Round one. I probably should have traded up, to be honest. There's a six foot four corner, which, I mean, in previous Maddens, those used to be, like, guaranteed. But Terrell Hicks, I think, is him. 5'11", 21 years old. Those freaking letters are big, too. Every every letter, number, everything's huge. Uh, but he looks very talented. If I can show you the physical aspect, which you can see here, is insane. Terrell Hicks is my man. Hopefully he's hidden, but if he's not, he's still going to be a very good overall. And oh boy. Oh boy, that's a pretty good looking player, if I must say so myself. Very athletic and hidden. I do got to say, though, the uh, I wouldn't call it rework, but the redesign on the... The dev traits looks freaking amazing. It looks so freaking nice. Options for more corners? I don't know. It is something we need, but is it that big of a need? Safety wouldn't hurt, but don't really need it that bad. Uh, maybe I do take it. We need a DT pretty badly, but we can just go for... I don't really like Mobley. Uh, McLeod was supposed to be good, and he just dropped off hard. He had an A to C finesse, and he was just terrible. Kind of expected because he's a bigger dude, but... I don't really know if I like any of the DTs, honestly. Uh, Mobley would probably be the guy I take at five. I'm honestly thinking I'd just take this corner, no? I really like Gerald Holiday, but we don't need a pass rusher after going for uh, our dude. Uh, Tracy Woods looks good. Don't even need a lineman technically right now. So I think I'm going to go... I do like Bigsby as well, though. I'm going to compare Bigsby and Spencer, because 6'4 in previous Maddens means God, but I have seen a lot of normals athleticism's kind of lacking as well. But if I don't take a 6'4", and then this guy sucks, and the other guy's good, I'm going to look like such an idiot. 22, 6'1", what's the physical? Yeah, I'm going to take Bigsby. Come on. Come on! 
Yes, hidden development trade. Don't know what the corner, the six foot corner corner is like, but that is a good pick, dude. One to two was still there. That's a win. And at five and the third, if there are, those guys are there, we can get our DT anyways. And we're just looking good. This was a really good draft for us so far. Needed some corners, got those corners. Once again, say what you want about the real life corners that they uh, signed. The corner six four is still there, by the way. Uh, but this isn't, you know, this isn't real life at the end of the day. If I find a better option, I'm going to take it. Uh, way more offensive linemen than DT, so I'm going to take Mobley, who I am a little questionable against, but I really have no choice. So uh, Mobley in the 4-3 going to be an automatic starter no matter what his dev is, which is anyways. It's hidden. Another hidden. Killing the drafts early on, which we love to see. I think we made a good decision on that six foot four corner, though, because, I mean, even if he's hidden... I got to imagine he's going to be a low overall, right? Like, those ratings were brutal. Went for the athleticism, and even then, better um, grades anyways. Like, we had a B zone, as a, uh, I believe. But, yeah. Maybe dodged a bullet? I don't know. Six four horn is still there, which is really worrisome. Uh, is our guard there? Who the hell is our guard? Tracy Woods. There's a lot of good players here, but I'm going to take Tracy Woods. He looks the best out of the bunch. Let our first offensive line. I mean, look at the A's. Let our first offensive lineman be hidden. Why not? Why not? Four hiddens in a row. I will say, looking at the draft class, which you, of course, can change on your own with the little stronger, weaker sliders for each position, looking pretty similar to last Madden. I'm going to be honest with you. The way everyone looked, it was pretty similar to last game's uh, like average classes. I don't know if it's just randomized and it just happened to be that for my very first, but... Definitely looks very, very similar. And holy crap, all my players are gone. Do I take Randy Hatchett? A bunch of six. I'm going to take Gary because he's a, a decently fast wide receiver. And then if the DT's there in the six, I'll take him. Uh, first normal, 94 speed. He's not that fast, but it's one of the fastest options I've seen that wasn't 23 or 24. And honestly, I, I really a hope that this, this lag is because it's the online servers and everyone's playing it right now, even though it's 2 a.m. for me, local. Um, and B that uh, we win a Super Bowl early because this is really painful. I honestly almost wonder... Oh, he's gone. I honestly almost wonder if they did their classic thing that they did in the past where they uh, they didn't remove the old interface and all that, all the UI, and they just layered it over so everything's running in behind like it was in 22, I think. If they did that again, dude, I swear... Uh, but honestly, at this point, I'm not really sure if I like anyone, so I may be looking to trade away. Unless there's like some halfway decent, speedly little linebacker. All right, we finished the draft. No trade downs. So the uh, don't trade down because it's cheese uh, crowd should be very proud of me. Ooh! Also, the fact that we don't have to scroll all the way down. Clutch. Finally, some okay decisions. Uh, but 78 overall, then 76. I do want to find the 6 for 4 cornerback first and foremost. I think his name was like Spencer or something like that. All right, Spencer went to the Panthers. A 72 overall, 91 speed cornerback with normal. Yeah, we dodged a bullet there, let me tell you. But I also will say, 81's man, 78 uh, press is kind of insane. Uh, cornerback, 81 man for our guy as well. But the difference is very fast and hidden development trade. 5'11 is, you know, you'd like a little bit taller, but that's fine. Especially for a rebuild, it shouldn't matter. I don't think height matters at all. We've done experiments for years. I was kind of hoping for better than star. Number 38 is not my favorite thing, but with how slow the menus are right now in this game... I cannot be bothered. I I mean, if I don't catch it the first time, it's a GG. Uh, bad man this time. Not Batman. Bad man. 76 zone. A little bit slower, but obviously better than the 6 foot 4 corners. I mean, he's several overalls higher, and I suppose corner dev ups aren't the most common things in the world. Another star development trade. So, seemingly like last Madden, where, yeah, you're going to see more, uh, you know, hiddens, pretty common, but not going to see much more than, like, star. Which I guess kind of reflects their uh, decisions on most of the rookie class as well, because there's a lot of hidden, uh, well, star development trade rookies from this real life, you know, 2023 draft class. Just only three of them are superstar though. Uh, 52 is a D is he even no, that's not a DT. Is he a DT? That don't look like a DT, dude. I thought that was a linebacker at first. Oh my! And then guard 
which I suppose this actually is the position that he'll play. Oh my lord, his run block is terrible. Or whatever, the pass run block power, I think it was. Garbons. Terrible. What's the dev, though? Gonna be stick on at guard. Everyone seems thin. It's weird, because when I first loaded the game, it feels like everyone's big, but the rookie classes all look thin as hell. And I also apologize if this episode's a little longer than most will be, but the the UI, for one, is just so damn slow it hurts. And then, two, uh, I'm just excited to play Madden 24, which hopefully you guys are as well, whether you uh, freaking 80 overall. Oh my, that's a generational, is it not? 95 juke move with that speed, 230 as well for weight, which is huge for that speed and a, a juke ability. But uh, now maybe you're not able to play the game yet. Superstar development trade. I don't know where I was going with that. I got so distracted because it takes so long for the UI to go. I literally just, I, I lost the train. The train's gone. This is actually so absurdly slow. It's hurting my feelings. Uh, oh yeah, Woods is a straight up starter. I know he's not. I don't know why Ruiz is just not showing up. Um, but this is what the team looks like uh, with Ruiz at right guard, of course. We'll fix that in a second. Uh, quarterback's questionable. Jared Goff, I think, can get it done, but do we want him to? I don't know. McNeil, I don't know if he really even fits for a true 4-3, which they did run a bit more of last season. Uh, but as of right now, this is the best we're going to do. Edge looks pretty damn good, set for the future, I imagine. Corners look set. DBs look set. Honestly, outside of like maybe one DT, maybe a linebacker or two, we're pretty set on defense. And then offense, there are some question marks, but there are some uh, solid-looking players on uh, the offense as well. Oh, I do not like the way this trade thing looks. <laughs> I don't. I think it's a little too large. I think they could have... They could have thinned it out a little. The same exact thing that happened to Aiden Hutchinson happened to Mobley. Had the camp standout, camp breakout, whatever you want to call it. Didn't get it, but gets a dev breakout later on in the season anyways. All right, contracts. 84 mil for the guys to be re-signed. Jared Goff, that is quite a bit of money. Derek Brown, a 3 or 12 is pretty fair. Taylor Decker, I think, is a guy I'd like to keep. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson is a fifth-year option, which we're definitely going to go for. And then Jamison Williams' fifth-year option is absurdly high. He's not really played nearly as good as the that contract uh, or that fifth-year option, so I'm probably going to just let it happen and then just re-sign him normally. But we're actually not in the best way right now financially, um, and I would normally like take away the, the play. You know, I was thinking about removing the motivations, but at the same time, Market value wise, it seems like the guys are kind of getting less than they're worth, anyways. So, if you know a five year 100 is what he signs for, that's pretty fair for real life. If anything, he probably should be, what, well, he's got another achievement, re sign a 90 plus overall player. He'd probably be paid more than that, even. Uh, we're losing a lot of games again. Jared Goff probably on his way out of this raid. So, don't know why I would re sign him when we're struggling. I mean, where are the touchdowns, my guy? Nine touchdowns through tw uh, 10 or 11 weeks? Are we feeling okay? Got a four-year 20 for Derek Brown, uh, Barnes, which is, I mean, 76 overall. A little older than I would have liked. Probably should have just signed him to a cheaper deal than that, but it happened anyways. Everyone else seemingly is a backup, even Aline McNeil. I think we could do better. Uh, oh, yeah, Taylor Decker, let's sign him because... I don't actually know how well he's playing, but his overall tells me I want him back. Two-year 28, fair enough. But yeah, I think it's new QB time. Bit of a turnaround on the season. I don't know if it's going to be good enough to get to the playoffs, though. And it is. What a turnaround. I went to the old well. You know, the old well. The old Chiefs playbook well. And well, well, well. Uh, it turned us around quite a bit. I don't remember exactly when it was. Maybe week 10 or week 11. Uh, as you can see, we did really badly. And then... Started winning a bunch of games, won five in a row right at the end, and looks like it's another one of those years. <laughs> but we're in the playoffs. Um, if we win a Super Bowl, I'm calling it there because this this slowness is driving me nuts. But I'm going to be honest with you, if we barely snuck in, I would highly doubt. I would highly doubt that we have won a uh, or will win a Super Bowl. Uh, Jared Goff was pretty similar last year. I think we need to replace him, though. Jameer Gibbs wasn't good. Jamison Williams wasn't good. Laporta was pretty good for a tight end. Uh, Amon Ross and Brown, the touchdowns are low. I guess Williams is okay. Gary did pretty well, too. Uh, O-line wasn't great. Defensively, we had uh, double-digit sackers, two of them on the edge. Mobley was decent. A couple of interceptions, nothing crazy. Kicking was perfect, which is nice. Jack Fox was pretty good as a punter. Kick return, punt return game. There was, like, no yards. 
This team is really not playing well, let me tell you. Mahomes, the uh, MVP. Jordan Love at number 10. Interesting. I'm sure he deserves that. Offense player of the year, not on the list. Defensive player of the year, we had three guys in the conversation. No rookie of uh, offense. Mobley wins it for defense, though. Quarterback number seven for Jared Goff. Wide receiver number eight for Williams. Not on the list for O-line this time. D-line number three and four. Linebackers at number four. And safety at nine. And then kicker of the year goes to Riley Patterson, which should be a dev up. Not bad. And as far as like actually playing in a game goes, I have not played a single game yet. It has been seven hours now. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's become a process. Who's their tight end? Alex Anderson, number 16. Why do the Chiefs have to make these numbers happen? Why? Ooh, it's snowing. Nice. Snowy game. I'm sure this will help us. You know, the Dome Detroit Lions. I also have my uh, system on performance base, so um, just saying. Hoping uh, <laughs> hoping they fix this menu stuff because it is really annoying. 7-0, to zero, not a bad start. 14-0. to 21-0. Maybe we actually have a chance at this thing. The, the score and the timer and all that is so tiny. This game is not for the old... Holy crap, I guess if it wasn't, uh, I probably wouldn't be allowed to play. We just had a 45-0 shutout blowout in our first playoff game in a rebuild. That is crazy, dude. Oh my. Jordan Love, who was 10th, was he 10th? Yeah, 10th on MVP, gets smoked. They can't run the ball. Apparently, the Detroit Lions defense is elite. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we added a little bit, the DBs, and uh, obviously Josh Allen was big, but really, 45-0 to in Green Bay in the snow good. That is otherworldly of an ass whooping. Like, that is, that is just brutal. Uh, of course, Josh Allen, he's not the youngest guy anymore, so trying to get that speed rusher up as high as physically possible before, uh, you know, Instead of going up, he starts to fall off the cliff a little bit. But we're going to the divisional round, winning that very first game. I guess if I won the Super Bowl here, I'd do two more to try to get the dynasty, but I can't do much more than that. The X Factor, B. John Robinson, the Falcons, who are 16 and 1. The Falcons and Sim are insane still, apparently. Overall is very similar though. Ooh, I like the little I like that though. The little like the blue and the red and the, the thingies, the curtain kind of looking thing. I like that. That's cool. Oh, their stadium's sick too. I didn't really think about the stadiums either for our choices. Texans are their stadium is their stadium decent? I can't remember. The Bears, at least we get some snowy weather potentially. That's pretty fun. Uh but let's uh let's see it. Let's see if we can actually get to a Super Bowl. We went forty five to zero, so maybe not win against the Falcons by that much, but to just win? Like, it'd be a hell of a drop-off to not at least win this 13-3. Not bad. Uh, third quarter. This this quarter is going. This game's going. Defense is looking elite, dude. I'm not saying the Falcons were really, ooh, barely going to win. We're a legit 16-1 team, but 16-1 is 16-1. They had to beat a lot of teams to get there. And we are here in the championship round. Jameer Gibbs was absolutely terrible. I can't believe how bad. Bad Jameer Gibbs is playing right now. Josh Allen killed it. Uh, no interceptions. Kicking. They missed one. Young Hui Koo. Not looking too good there. Obviously, uh, Riley Patterson, kicker of the year for the NFC. Looking good. And I got to say, I don't know what it is. I think it has been a little bit colder outside, but not uh, not gagging as much as I was late in the, the Madden 23 cycle, if you've uh, been watching the videos a long time. It was a disaster. And it's really, really humid in this room or really hot. As, uh, you know, my Xbox and computer have been on for some time. It's like a damn furnace in here. But we're moving on to the championship round. We actually could get a year two Bears uh, Lions win. It would be with their uh, the Chiefs playbook in fairness. But let's take a look. The Eagles, 10-7. and 7. Who did they have to beat? Because obviously the Falcons, I forgot. They changed the way things are. Uh, but the Falcons, obviously, 16-1. and 1. Uh, that's that's kind of insane. Did I just sell again? I sold again. I sold again. I read it, and my brain still said, "Go on, click it, see what happens, punk." It's like, thanks. I mean, you just sold me, and I had to click it again. These menus are so slow. I don't know if I mentioned that yet or not, but it is really pain. Uh, but of course, you could see uh, where the hell are they? They smoked the Cardinals. That's not good. Didn't smoke the Cowboys, but once again, back-to-back -back games of 37 plus. 
This could be the end. <laughs> well, let's see. Maybe Jared Goff's him. Maybe he's him. And to the shock of no one, the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. 7-0, 7-7. Down by seven now. Come on, Lions. Defense gave them a golden opportunity. They took it. It's 14 all. They got seven. We get seven. It's 21 all. We're, we're kind of we're keeping it close. Oh, my God. Whose ball is it? Are they just moving unstoppable? Oh, pick. Field goal. Tied up. Is that a – that's a punt. Damn, they pinned us hard. Okay, the clock is going. We have two timeouts. They're trying to get us to run. I don't like the way that's so dark. I can't see. It's blinding me. Is there a reason why that's so freaking dark? They, like, can they do anything right? I forgot about the refs. They're they're in now. We'll just take what we can't. What? Pass out a re. What? What? Who coded this? Huh? Wait, how is this? I looked away because I was just, it was like a layup. That's out of reach. This is out of reach. It was so in reach, it's inside of him. What a game. Yeah, it wouldn't give me an early copy either. I just, somehow, some way, the most bullcrap things just happen to me, and it just, it really doesn't work. Oh, Jameson. No, it's not Jameson. It's Amon Ra. With the superstar out of bounds to the 29. We have a chance. The best kicker in the league has a chance to win the game for us. Watch, they won't even kick it like previous Maddens. They did it! We're headed to the Super Bowl. Amon Ross St. Brown proving that it's not all about speed. Talent can get you there. Let's go. Of all the teams to beat the Eagles, I know we smoked the Packers, but... The Eagles throwing two interceptions. I am shocked. Gibbs has been so freaking bad. It's painful. It's painful watching him. And, of course, I do remember Fulton. Kind of kind of wasted him a little bit. Two-year 10, he had so much potential, 25 years old. But the draft just – it just happened, dude. The draft happened. What can I tell you? All right, head to the Super Bowl. It's probably going to be a loss, if we're going to be honest. But you never know, dude. We might get insanely lucky. Or we got lucky enough to win that game. And here, let's see if we got any dev ups before we go in. Uh, like I said, uh, I was good. Well, not like I said, but I was gonna, you know, end it after one win. Ooh, Laporta's a superstar. That's interesting, actually. Uh, but I was gonna end it after one Super Bowl win, but this early on, I probably will just do. Uh, oh, there's extra slots. That's crazy. Superstar dev. But uh, I probably will just try to do two more seasons, even though it kills me, these menus, how slow they are. Um, Mobley, the superstar. Josh Allen, the superstar. Campbell, the X Factor. I do not hate what I'm seeing here. Seems like the threshold, maybe the, the sim is a little bit more simly. Because uh, the threshold for some of these dev ups is seemingly lower. Which tells me maybe the average stats aren't as high as they used to be. But Campbell is an X Factor. He is cooking. He's a cooking. And Mobley hopefully gets some sh finesse, and which did not happen the very first try. Lovely. He's obviously being developed as a block shedder, which I don't agree with. But at the same time, especially with the menus, you just can't. You know, like there's I've had plenty of people like talking crap, like yeah, 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 how you play? You're supposed to upgrade manually. It's like, do you even understand? Oh no, he was already superstar. What am I even talking about? You got the breakout. Do you understand how long that would take, especially with how slow the menus are? Of course, Jared Goff, if he wins a Super Bowl, how do you let him go to free agency? I don't know. Uh, but here we go. The Chiefs. What overall are they? 87. So, I mean, the same as the Eagles, in fairness. Hey, any given Sunday, you just never know. Oh, we know. We just drove down, got nothing. They drove down. Like, only three, though. Defense doing okay to start. First half ends with 6-3. to three, Now down by four, though. Huge drive up back by three. Tied up, down by seven. 20 all. Defense giving a giving them a chance here. Giving us a chance. First down. A touchdown would give us a pretty big lead. Once there's a chance. Run out of time, please. They do. We won. No shot. Year two. Against the Chiefs of all teams. I mean, it is with the Chiefs playbook, so it's. It's not the most truthfully honest win in the world, but 
I did not think that was going to happen at all. Playbooks still mean that much in Madden, apparently. Nice. The worst part is it's the same playbooks that matter, it seems. Of course, the regular season stats didn't look that good, but for this Lions team to beat the teams they did, especially to smoke the Packers 45-0, to is pretty insane. And to go all the way to win the Super Bowl is even more improbable. Yet here we are hoisting the Lombardi, beating the two Super Bowl runner-up, well, not runner-ups, but contenders, two teams representing a season removed or so. And Jared Goff, who was maybe even still looking at his, uh, at you know being a free agent, has just hoisted a Lombardi. I, I don't know what to think. Like, I don't know what to think. He's not really getting much help from the running backs. Is he our best option? I, I don't know, dude. Their pass rush was pretty good. Bigsby with a pick, which was pretty clutch. Kicking was perfect, which needed to be. And we win the game by four. Um, I guess we're going to go for the back-to-back -back or the two out of three, which would be technically a dynasty. That would mean kind of uh, pure dominance, in my opinion. I don't know if it's going to happen, but we're going to try. Ooh, and an achievement. Win a Super Bowl in an online league. That is not bad. And I really wanted that just to be over. I really did, but I guess we'll do two more seasons. See if we can win back-to-back. -back. And if we can't, try to win, like I said. And if you do win the back-to-back, -back, you might as well go for the three-peat. And then if you get a three P, then it doesn't really matter. You can't really. It's pretty impossible to beat a three P. Aiden Hutchinson with the fifth year option. Like I said, Jamison really hasn't been that great. But more importantly, I think we can afford that on a cheaper long term. Anyways, you know, if we waited, Jared Goff, you could do better, but you could definitely do worse. He just won a Super Bowl, three year one hundred five. He takes it. I've got no choice. He's a serviceable starter, and well, we kept him. What can I tell you? If your option, like I said, I think we're going to let it move as I think that should be like 15 mil at most per year, whereas that's a $24 million right there. But he is also red interest, so we may have risked ourselves by uh, not guaranteeing ourselves an extra season with him, but we'll see. And would you look at that? EA still has their issues. Joe Burrow, the 99 overall X Factor, who's 28 years old, the prime of his life, is a free agent. I want to bid if I can afford it just to see who the teams are like what i watch it'll be the Bengals on there as well what do you mean i don't have the damn salary cap just freaking make it happen dude i don't care thank you i just want to see obviously i'm not gonna freaking pay him i don't have the money for it the jets interesting so no one's really actually offered him that much because he's too damn expensive uh some pretty cool names here but overall we're trying to save a little bit of money we have to pay uh jameson williams here it's gonna jump up like 15 20 mil like i said so yeah, we're probably not going to spend anything here. And honestly, what I'm thinking about, do we need anything other than maybe a quarterback? Not really, right? DT, I suppose. Let's actually take a look if there's a DT. But other than the DT, there's really not someone we need. So we might just try to draft a guy, and that's about it. You know, you can see here, like, McNeil really doesn't fit the 4-3 mold. Uh, and then the other guys, is there even an option? Not really. I also just realized we won the Super Bowl without Ruiz even being active. Like, I forgot to put him at the number one guard spot for right guard. This team's cooking. All right, here we are in the draft. We have pick 32 because obviously we just won a damn Super Bowl. I'm debating on what I want to do with this pick because 32 is kind of valuable because you get that for uh, the fifth-year option. It doesn't really matter too much to us because we're only going to be doing two years. And even if we didn't win the Super Bowl there, we would never see the fifth-year option from a rookie class here. But I do like Joe Frazier a lot. We also do have Theo Whitley, or Wheatley, who looks very similarly good. Don't know that power move from Frazier, so he might be a goon goon. But I'm kind of willing to take either or. That's our biggest need right now. There's a quarterback. I'm kind of thinking about it, but I don't know. Um, do I maybe go to like 25 if Frazier's there and make a trade-up? If not, I just wait for Wheatley. I think that's the move. It's so sucky. Like, and like, look at how slow this is. Literally, all you have to do is, when it says advance to next pick, have an option where it says advance to specific pick. And there's a little slider that you go left or right, and it shows you which spot that you would be moving to. It's so simple. It's so simple, EA. Please. And you can't say, oh, well, Ultimate Team brings them all the money. It's like, yeah, it brings them a lot of money. But there is a huge franchise market as well. If they were to lose all of the franchise market, there would be uh, quite a bit of a loss. So it'd be nice if, you know, we got a little bit more uh, 
you know, more updates and quality of life things for, uh, you know, the UI and all that instead of it being a negative. Once again, I don't know if that's my lineup either, but like the top left for, for 2025 is literally off the screen. The two is off the screen. I just want clean enough, quick enough UI. I don't want, you know, the 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 roster thing to change where instead of it just line up as number one, it's this and then this and that and this. And then when you have the restructure, instead of edit being the first thing that shows up when you click up on the D-pad, it's the restructure now. You actually click that. And, and they, they hid the... Um, the height weight thing, I believe, behind uh, like several different menus. It's it is really just a disaster. I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna lose them. Uh, do I really want to trade with the Titans? It's a it's a little bit of a jump. It might cost me a third round pick. I mean, he's decent, but do I make that trade? I don't know. Also, this is the first time we're actually opening the trade menu here, which is definitely something. It's it's pretty robust. It's quite large. Uh, first and a third. I really don't want to get rid of a third this year, but I mean, I'm down. Okay, fair enough. It's kind of weird to see that it goes like instantly when everything else isn't. Oh, crap. We're, yeah, we're a bit far out there. I forgot that they have the extra year of picks now. So fourth round pick next year rather than two years from now. Really? This is the value. A third and a fourth this year? I don't even think this is worth it. Yeah, screw that. That's that's already a lot. Screw that. I'm just going to move to our pick. All right, 32. I don't know who's there, but I would imagine at least Wheatley. Maybe Frazier's there anyways. I highly doubt it, but you never know. And he is not. There's another DT there too, but I think Wheatley, even though he's a little undersized, can play interior. And uh, he's 6'4", 278, 22 years old. Hidden development trait. Very strong. Very athletic. He's a beastly dual-style player. Of course, he's going to be playing DT for us, but... You know, it's uh, it's a tough one in Syrier, but that's where we need him right now. We don't really need edge. And the quarterback, Justin Hill, is still there. He's a 2-3. to three. Don't know how he was 100% scouted. He's got some decent key ratings. Good throw power. He's pretty athletic. I do think he has star written all over him. And honestly, if you think he can get a star quarterback when your quarterback's Jared Goff, who's kind of older and he is on a three-year 105 now, I don't really need anything else. I'm going to take him. And he is hidden. I think I'm right. I think I called this one to the T. Speed would be such a disappointment because his athleticism is insane. But 84 speed with the other ratings just drop him so hard in that category. But yeah, I think I might be spot on. I think I said I, I think he has star written all over him. And he's hidden. I mean, he could be better. But I would I would guess that that's, that's the dev he is. There's a lot of linebackers here. Um, there's some linemen... I guess we'll wait until one of them's gone and then we'll trade up. I'd probably want Stoudemire the most, but Stoudemire, Bacon, whatever. And damn, Stoudemire. I forgot this trade's not here. I keep clicking the wrong freaking UI option. Ooh. All right, so I'm in love with the f six slots because we ended up getting the trade. Uh, fourth, next, a fifth, and a seventh this year with our third round pick to move up like 20 spots. Which even though we don't need linemen right now, I think the value is there. And... Um, I mean, I want to want to take a player I think is valuable. A lot of linebackers. Don't know if we're going to land one of them or not, but yeah, like, there really is a lot. This guy was uh, pretty athletic, but F zone probably not going to be the case. Pat Johnson looks pretty decent too, but I don't know if I can go for a uh, a running back when we don't really need one. Our running backs do suck, but I don't think he's going to change that anyways. And hidden development trade, Brad Bacon, one of the easiest positions uh, since last Madden to dra you know, draft hidden for. And we're going to move on to 32. Hopefully somebody's there, whether they be the running back, which would be kind of neat, or one of the linebackers, which hopefully there's somebody, like I said, because it's a lot of linebackers. And unless they all just go right then and there, it'd be really harsh if that's the case. And we see two linebackers, one of them being Terrence Henson. That's going to be the choice. Speedly, 21 years old, 6'2". Hidden development trade. That's a win. That is a very good player. And somehow my wide receiver Truman's still there, so I'm going to take Mr. Chris Truman. Um, another, like, 94, 90, yeah, I was about to say 94, 95 speed guy, and he's exactly that. Here we go, 85 overall with some rookies. See if any of them are halfway decent or not. I do want to see Frazier, obviously. Uh, 75, 71, 72, 71, 68. Uh, I definitely want to look at the quarterback. The guard probably doesn't matter. Linebacker probably doesn't matter. And then DT will start, but i got to move him to DT uh, anyways, so... Uh, good power move if he block sheds. So he would be kind of one of those guys where it's like, do you really want to play him in tier? And 
I mean, we don't really have much of a choice. So we're going to go from massive DT to like not so massive. Uh, what position or number? 91, I guess. Dev, star, not really expecting much. I'm curious to see Frazier though. And then of course, Justin Hill. Justice Hill? Justin Hill. 71 overall. Uh, maybe the QB of the future. I don't know. He's very athletic. Decent enough throw power. He's like a faster Jared Goff, honestly, which isn't the worst thing to get, especially in the, was it late second? Basically a third round pick. Oh, especially when he's superstar. Okay. That is, we, that was something we'll take. Fair enough. Let's take a look at when Frazier went. Frazier went, oh my God. He went like literally two picks before a 77 overall hidden development traits. 76 block shed, 72 finesse. He is a pretty good looking DT. Don't know what the dev is. If he's only star though, I don't really mind. It's pretty similar to our guy anyways. Yeah, and he, he's just a little bit more of a prototypical DT. We don't hate it though. Oh, I should have looked at uh, generations. because I'm pretty sure right as we left, we've seen that from the Buccaneers. 81 overall, 97 speed, I think we just seen. Uh, 68 or 79, 78. There's some really high overall rookies, but this guy is obviously the cream of the crop. Six foot tall, hidden development trade, 81 overall. Great press, great man, great zone, great speed, pretty solid catching. There's a chance he is just star and he's just one of those high overalls, but whether or not he's star or X Factor, he's insane. And he's only star. Like I, I, I did say that was a possibility. And. He's still ridiculous. You don't care, but it would be a little disappointing. You're like, oh, that's a generation. I landed one. And it's like, oh, he's actually two devs lower than X Factor. He could literally go from like, you know, pretty good to, you know, basically Sauce Garner, you know, becoming a, a super high overall after one year with abilities. And I suppose we'll take a look at the devs of the uh, linebacker. Well, not devs, but the dev of the linebacker as uh, we're going to be moving his position. And it's only star anyways. Here we are for season three, the second to last season we will be doing. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I, if they do not fix the slowness, the lag from the menus, don't know how many rebuilds I'm going to be doing uh, anytime shortly because, of course, they have to fix it. There's no way they can let this be the way the game is. I feel like this happens like every year anyways. Um, so I'm not sure the next rebuild, but, uh, yeah, I'd appreciate it if you left a like, maybe subscribe, but... As far as when the next rebuild will actually be, I don't know when that'll be. <laughs> this is kind of painful, but this is what the squad looking like. We're moving on to the third season. Well, it's week 13 and we're under 500, so I don't know what that means to you, but um, Jameson's asking for about 10 mil per. Once again, he hasn't really played super well, so, I mean, why would I have given him that fifth year? You know, this is cheaper. Five-year 57.5. I was looking for a better fit, whatever. We'll, uh, we'll up it a little bit later. Kirby Joseph, 3-year 20. I mean, I'm kind of willing to just knock this out. A 6-year 42. Boom. That is a very good contract for us. Not a bad one for him. Malcolm Rodriguez. We do have a replacement ready for him. I'm kind of thinking maybe we actually move on from him. Uh, Panay Sewell will obviously be a guy we're going to try to keep because he is a beast. Superstar dev on top of it. I'd sign today if there was some way to improve how this team aligns with my interests. Okay, what's the what's the alignment of interest needs? Uh, Cesar Ruiz probably don't need him. I'm probably gonna let him go. I, I guess I kind of sold. I already sold myself on it. Jack Campbell, I do not think you take the fifth year. And Gibbs, I'm debating. I think maybe you take the fifth year, even though he's not really played well, anyways. But uh, yeah, money's not great here, so. Let Montgomery go. Let Jonah Jackson go. Let Cesar Rees go. Let Rodriguez go. Try to keep Williams and Sewell. Like last year, if we win, I think we're in. Even if we lose, we might be in. And we win, so we are in. And we take the whole freaking division on top of it. Uh, I don't know if we had any guys that were on the list. Um, it seems like the rest of the league's doing pretty well for themselves statistically. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, team schedule. It is so slow. Uh, you know, win-loss, win-loss, win-loss kind of situation. But then, just like last season, another really good finish. Packers losing two in a row, losing the division because of that. Uh, and then you have the Bears. Were they even good? I, oh, they lost four in a row. And then the Vikings were just terrible all the way through. Oh, my. EA hates the Vikings so much in Sim. They're so bad in Sim. Let's take a look at the stats and the awards. See if Jared Goff did anything positive for once. Falcons went from 16-1 and to 9-8, and by the way which is ridiculous. Goff's numbers, yards are really good, touchdowns are decent, picks are a little high, 
Gibbs still sucks. I'm pretty sure it's still coded where unless they're a 90-plus overall, they're going to just suck and sim. Laporte is amazing. Could go to X-Factor. Williams might get to Superstar, and then the rest were all right. But I'm on Ross St. Brown needs to be better for how good he is. Uh, 10 sacks allowed for the left guard. Glad we're getting rid of him. Uh, Josh Allen was amazing. Should be an X-Factor. Hutchinson, 10.5 is pretty good. Mobley, not bad at 8. Interceptions kind of low across the board. Patterson, we just gave a 3 or 12 to. Missing 4 to 22 kicks, which is modest enough. 53.9 yards per punt from Mr. Jack Fox. And that'd be it. Take a look at the award wins. Obviously, we would not have had anything for MVP. But Joe Burrow went to the Bears, and they still weren't good enough to freaking make the playoffs. Yikes, dude. Any award wins at all? Might have been on the list, but as far as actually winning goes, not our day. All right, here we go. 88 overall versus the 86 overall Falcons. We beat them when they were 16-1, and so... I mean, they were at home. We're, we're at home this time. It could be our year back-to-back, -back, maybe. We'll see. All right, going to the end of the game. Driving down for three, it's something. They drive down for seven, which is a little more than something. It's a little more than our something, at least. 10-14, to, uh, 17-14, to 21-17, back and forth. Down by one. It's a hell of a start to the game. It's a really close one. Defense gives a, a lead, basically. 28-24. to 24. Defense not going to clutch up. And on third and ten... The offense has a chance. They're not going to get it, and we're going to choke. Holy choke city. Wow, the team just choked so freaking hard. Ten unanswered right at the end. Desmond Ritter cooking us up. That is disastrous. That is really disappointing. <laughs> so they go 16-1. They can't beat us. The next season, they somehow go 9-8, and eight, and they do beat us. I, I don't know. Any given Sunday... Or bad coding, whatever you prefer. Super Bowl between the Cowboys and the Raiders. And the winner of this one, probably the Cowboys, I'd imagine. And the winner is the Cowboys, like we said. 70 million, 88 overall. We're not looking too bad. We're not looking too bad at all. Aiden Hutchinson, oh, this I keep forgetting. It's not the top option to go to the adjust roster section. Ugh, I would imagine... If there was anyone, it would probably be Laporta that went up in dev, but I don't know if anyone else would have went up on offense. Let's see. X-Factor Laporta, no one else went up in dev, unfortunately. Defensively, uh, no dev up for Allen, which is shocking, but Mobley the X-Factor. So add another X-Factor to the defensive list. Three now that did not start even close to it. Oh, my Lord, how slow it is. It went right over. X-Factor Mobley. Manu Jab Mobley. So we have 70 mil. We have a couple of guys that are kind of, you know, running up on their contract that are, you know, kind of big names like Jack Campbell. Uh, he's going to be expensive no matter what. So I think I am actually going to give him a fifth year guarantee him for the next season, I suppose. Uh, and then Jameer Gibbs, I actually am just going to re-sign. I think in real life you probably give the fifth year option, but l denying the fifth year option here allows me, even though in real life they could probably just add the fifth year and then restructure something for a long term anyways, but we can't do that. I don't believe so. Uh, I'm gonna try to give him like a five-year deal worth like forty or something like that, which is pretty fair for the market. And uh, we'll be cooking. I, we have a little bit of money to spend in free agency on top of it if we want to. See what kind of wild names are in free agency this time. Oh, actually, pretty tame. Okay, Tyler Lockett. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty weak class actually. Never mind. Maybe if there's like a cheap linebacker for a one year, maybe we do. But we do have Henson, so I'm, I'm pretty cool with what we got. Malcolm Rodriguez, probably one of the more uh, sought-after players because everyone else is kind of on the older side. But, uh, yeah, I think we're going to pretty much just skip this, do a little bit of scouting. Oh, X-Factor for Char Chuck Clark. I almost called him Chark Cluck. <laughs> Completely different topic. Oh, maybe we go across because we have, like, no young backups. But, uh, yeah, we're pretty much not going to go for any names here other than maybe backup-level talent. So, at this point, we're still kind of, like, future-proofing, if anything. We don't really have an actual need for this specific season. Uh, there is a solid-looking cornerback that's 6'4". He's a 1-2. to If he's there, I'm going to take him. If he's not, I'm not going to worry. That's why I didn't go for the trade-up because our cornerback position is busted. And the guy that is busted as well, speaking of, is there. I think you have no choice, right? Mitch Macklin, not that athletic either, but... He's got the elite excel, he's got the elite agility, but the key ratings are so much better than the other guy. I'm going to risk it, I think. And another normal. Okay, I, I guess we sold. 
Now we're sitting at the two to three mark. There's a bunch of linebackers. Uh, really good right guard, Hugh Barber, but we could probably trade up for him. Decent little running back, Kai Bibbs, but probably not that big of a need. Uh, I'm half tempted to take the wide receiver, though. He's there, right? Yeah, Ty Collins. Tall, six foot five, 21 years old. Decently athletic. Excels iffy, but, I mean, he looks decent. Just don't think we really need a wide receiver, so I'm not really even sure why I'm bringing this up. Um, do I just take Molten? He's got, like, no block shed. I mean, there's not really a good choice here. I guess I'm going to go Vernon, I think. 22 years old. He's got a couple of A's in there. Speed's good enough. I'm going to go for Press and Vernon. And I've sold again. Nice. We're already traded a fifth uh, this year with a fourth next year for 2022 third this year with our trade up. A lot of words there. So 21 spots in a divisional. These two teams love each other for a fourth and a fifth, which is pretty on par, I suppose. Uh, with this trade, we're going to be taking Mr. Hugh Barber, who looked really solid. A bunch of A's and a B, 6'3", 21 years old, and development trade finally a hidden. So the draft is over. Let's take a look if we uh, really, really sold, because there could be some okay overalls in here. I would probably suspect a 74 or 75. Um, hello? Jeez, it's getting slower. It's getting so much lag here. Oh, 78 overall. We're not going to use him, so I'm not really even sure why I care that much, but yeah, he was actually a pretty good pick. He's nowhere near as bad as the other corner. Oh, he's very good. 81 man, 78 zone. He's freakly good. Very good corner. Uh, and then Barber, I mean, I don't really care too much about him being hit or not because obviously uh, we've got our starters for the year anyways, and this is the last season. It's the final season. Thank the Lord with the lag of the menus. Of course, uh, this is what the team looks like. We would actually have the future set with the Hill, depending on how Goff played this season and how the team performed. Maybe even halfway through, depending. Uh, maybe you look to replace Goff with that guy because he's got a very large ceiling. Um, put anything you want in that house. Uh, defensively, uh, pretty good stuff. You know, certain players did really well. Some still struggling, like, you know, Barnes, which is why we let go of Rodriguez because ceiling there isn't really seemingly that good. I've got all the sliders kind of similar to what I would have last year, so maybe they need to be upped a little bit. I don't know, but it's last season nonetheless, and I'm uh, going to be free. Oh, the money's actually not too bad for Mr. Aiden Hutchinson. He's been playing pretty well, so a four-year deal worth 92.5. That is a steal for us. Not even 20 mil per year. Uh, Laporta uh, might as well go with a five-year deal. Five-year 55, exactly what he's wanting. We are really broke, though, considering we're getting some steals of contracts. Uh, we'll go with a five-year deal for Gibbs, which would make him uh, 29 years old. Five-year 35, which is... I mean, he hasn't been good, so that's not a bad contract for both sides here. Brian Branch, he hasn't really done a whole lot either. Three or 15, glad to keep him. The guys are, they're lining up, and we're knocking them down contractually. Uh, maybe Decker's someone you let go, especially for how much Byron, when the hell did Byron Jones get here? Uh, but how much he's uh, kind of asking for. Hicks needs a contract already. I feel like these contracts are just going, going. Uh, Decker, we could afford him, but should we afford him? I don't know. Frank Ragnow, obviously, you uh, you pay him uh, 3 or 40.5. Nice. We'll take it. So about 13 mil per year for a 91 overall. It's not bad. Could get Decker. Do I want to pay him, though? What are his ratings? What are these ratings looking like? Uh, pretty good pass blocker, obviously. Very good pass blocker, actually. And that's kind of what the team does for the most part. So I suppose I'll give him a one-year 14. Why the hell not? And boom, there you go. Accepted it. Sweet. 18 mil left. We would save 18 mil going into the offseason, though. And then, actually, maybe a little bit less if we paid Jack Fox. But then we'd be able to afford Hicks pretty easily. Obviously, I wouldn't go for the fifth year because it would probably just cost us less in the long run just to just to pay him right away. So the Bears were killing it. And we uh, I went just straight to the playoffs because it's seemingly faster to sim that way. I just can't be bothered slow simming right now, especially since the last year anyways. But the Bears were 8-0 and we beat them. We gave them their first loss. And we went 14-3. and The scheme is still the Chiefs, of course. Uh, Jared Goff cooked up. Touchdowns are a little low, but yards are great. Could go to Superstar. This was a pretty spectacular season. Show you guys we didn't like force any wins or anything like that, but hell of a win streak. Gotta gotta give it to them. Speaking of a win streak, like we said, they lost their first game against us. 
Not a bad year at all. 14 and 3 could actually win the two out of three. Not bad. And every time I see that F for the franchise tokens, I just think of Spotify. It just throws me off every time. But Mahomes puts over 5,000 yards, a lot of rushing yards as well. Jared Goff, let's take a look at these numbers. Pretty up there. Could have maybe even won MVP. That's a great touch on a pick ratio. And Gibbs, don't know what his overall is, but maybe he's an 80 plus because 4.1 yards per carry with 20 touchdowns, 1,100 yards is great. Williams, solid season. Laporta, solid season. Amon Ross and Brown, solid season. Gray, not too bad. Blocking, very solid season. Uh, pass rush, Hutchinson was great, but overall, definitely down year for the you know the squad as a whole. Interceptions aren't great. Riley Patterson's been really good for us ever since the last two seasons now. Punting was great, and then kick return, punt return game, pretty uh, tame. I thought I pulled Gibbs from the kick return, punt return status because he's the starting running back. But it be what it be. Uh, Jared Goff was six with that touchdown to pick ratio, which is, I get the touchdowns were low, but really. Uh, Bijan's been killing it, by the way. And any actual award wins? Who was that? Was that uh, Tevin Jenkins? It'd be great for our freaking Bears online franchise to get him a dev up early. But all right, no wild card round, but with a chance to become a dynasty. We love to see this. Let me tell you, the Giants, 10-7. and 7, they were like, I don't remember if it was this rebuild or if it was a different sim idea, but they were like 1-16 and 16 or 2-15 and 15 or something. They were really bad, but here they are. We're in 89 overall. They're in 85. Let's see if we can get back to the Super Bowl or end with just that year two Super Bowl win. A little bit of a lackluster end to last season. I will say, though, with a bye week, to not win at least one playoff game would also be lackluster. 7-0, especially since it's the end of the freaking video. If we you know, lose, win, whatever happens. And it's not looking like a win for us. We can't do anything on offense. 6-17. I'm not really sure how a field goal really helps you there, son. But there's a chance. They're driving down. They get the touchdown. The defense needs to do what it's been doing all game. And they do a decent job. And they're just moving forward left and right. Fourth and one. Game on the line. They're apparently going to punt. I don't know if I believe it. What the hell's going on here? What the hell is this? Is this a fake or something? I was to say, I thought maybe it was like a glitch that shows you exactly what the, the other team's going to do or something like that. And for Gibbs to be as like, decently fast and agile as he is, man, he felt like he was stuck in the mud. I don't know if that's just a Madden 24 thing or not, but not preferable. Um, let's try to find our way into the end zone. We obviously saved it for the team with Equinemia, or not Equinemia, Amon Ross and Brown that one season. And that's a tough one. That's okay. So that must have been. Hopefully, it's a late hit. It might be a hold. That's classic. Got to hit aggressiveness, and we get bailed out. Oh my! The classic. If you're not clicking aggressiveness, your guy's gonna basically act like he's not there. Looks like they brought that back, which is sweet. Love that. That's super fun. To the tight end, and he gets it. Gets blasted, but handles it. And is moving, and I honestly... Dude, maybe debate going for it. If you get the touchdown, you go for two. The tight end, not super open. Got pressured, and throw's going to be a little out of bounds. Just a little. And this is the play that actually cooked for us. And they don't look like they're really on it again. We got so bailed by that penalty, though. That's just a force. And it's overthrown like a mof, though. I mean, we are on all Madden, but I, I do wonder how much of, like, accuracy problems we're going to have this year with classic passing because I mean there's seemingly trying to get everyone to move over to the the precision passing right tight end hit that throw and Laporta not the most agile movements gets out of bounds but it will be fourth and inches do you really run the ball on fourth and inches with the clock running like this I mean can we not do something like this is this play action what is this I mean that's pretty open almost missed the throw what a catch. Oh, they were kind of ready for it this time, though. Maybe not. A little overthrown, but the catch is made. And Williams really putting a, the team on his back on that one. And they're like, hell, dude, you should just go for this. Oh, my God, I'm blinded. Ooh, I don't know if I like this. Whatever. That's a tough one. Oh, didn't catch it, and the season's over. Unless we get the onside. Tell me I didn't miss, like, a blind, wide-open read. Um, not really. I mean, 
Jameson, maybe he's breaking free, but the tight ends, uh, the safety's on him. These guys, they covered it well. Maybe should have went for the extra point, but they covered it well. That's all that can really be said there. We sold the season on the go for, but I think nine times out of ten teams do that nowadays. Oh! Are you, who is this? Who's number 40? Henson is a moron. Is he serious? The ball took a bounce. The guy misses it, and he overruns it. What a champion. Good job, Henson. Well, unfortunately, that is going to be the end of the rebuild. We lose in the wildcard round after the bye week, or in the divisional round after the bye week from the wildcard round. And we're headed home, unfortunately. Lost to what could be a rookie. Nice. Lost to a rookie. Goff was okay, but not great. And then Gibbs has just been... I mean, he's just been terrible. He finally kind of showed up in the regular season this year, but that was like it. Like, that was the last, like, that was the only time we really saw him. And, of course, Patterson missed a field goal. Would have won the game without that. Good job, Patterson. Some kicker of the year you were a year ago, huh? All right, let's head to the Super Bowl, see what we're cooking up. Simulating all the juice. It is the Giants against the Jaguars. They beat us, so I mean, if that's going to mean anything. I feel like they have a pretty good chance to win this. They don't, but it was a close one. Uh, let's take a look. I guess there might be some dev ups, but in general, that is going to be it for this rebuild. We won a Super Bowl year two. Could not get the Dynasty, the back-to-back, -back or the Dynasty. Goff and Gibbs finally go up in dev. It's a little late, but I suppose 83 overall, he's, he's usable. Superstar development trait. Uh, now for Mr. Gauff. We kind of looked at his ratings before, but Gibbs, 89 overall, probably going to finally start developing well, uh, or it's playing well. Good juke ability, great change of direction, very athletic. Catching ratings are pretty decent. You know, Didn't really go up too much in many of the ratings. Uh, let's take a look at Mr. Amon Ross and Brown, who is now a 94 overall superstar. Speed is okay. It's good enough. Release could definitely use some work, but overall, insane route runner, insane hands. Very, very talented. Uh, wide receiver two, Jamison Williams, who obviously had to wait basically his whole rookie year and then six games in his second year. Bad release, insane speed. Good enough catching, pretty good route running, actually. And then we look at Laporta. Never really followed him too much, but I'm kind of curious. Uh, 87 overall X Factor, 26 years old. Very solid. Speed never went up, though. Really uh, good catching, pretty good route running. And uh, okay run blocking. He's uh, a pretty much great do-it-all guy. Uh, O-line, I guess we'll look at Sewell. The rest are kind of, you know, CPU generated. Not really that great anyways. Players, Sewell, uh, pass block power sucks, but everything else is so damn good. It's insane. And then the really unfortunate part, the defensive side where you have to click a right bumper every time you pull out of one of these players. Pull out. Yep, I said it. Very balanced Jack Campbell, who is, I mean, he's been insane for us ever since the start. Didn't, you know, go up in speed, which seems to be a little rare at certain positions. I haven't really seen a whole lot of uh, speed upgrades, like, at all. Uh, Garner Johnson, 88 overall. He doesn't start nearly that high. I think 82, 83, maybe? Uh, but let's take a look at his ratings. 29 now. 92 zone. Great addition. You know, ended up winning the Super Bowl. Fair enough. You know, it happened. Uh, what else do we have? Kirby Joseph, 86 overall player, 26-year-old. Obviously, a longer time to play. Decent speed, pretty good zone coverage. I mean, the game kind of upgrades the players pretty decently now. I don't know if it's actually balanced, but, I mean, these guys all look pretty good to me. Hicks, 86 overall, super misleading with that plus four, but still a really good corner. He's only 24, maybe about to be 25, I don't know. Uh, great man coverage, zone coverage, not so much, obviously. We just talked about it. Maybe they balance them. They do not. <laughs> they do not. We just got fortune on some of our players. Uh, Bigsby, same draft, 84 overall. So two overalls lower, one year older. Man coverage sucks, but his zone is great. So kind of the opposite of the last player, if you will. Uh, let's take a look at the defense now. Mr. Josh Allen, I suppose we'll take a look at. Um, you know, 90 uh, overall, now 30, but superstar Dev, 92 finesse. 78 block shed, pretty good athleticism. Wonder if Aiden Hutchinson went up much. I think he starts off at is it 81 speed? He's 97 overall though with X Factor, which is ridiculous because he only starts as a star. Might not went up one in speed. Finesse definitely went up quite a bit. Block shed 78 might be the same as he started. 
And then they do two DTs, which I'm surprising, uh, you know, surprised that Mobley went as high as he did. I don't even care about Wheatley. He doesn't even seem like he developed at all. Uh, but 89 overall for David Mobley. You know, finesse moves only 81, but block shed 89. He's a pretty good player, and obviously with that X factor, Dev so much left, left, you know, in the tank. And that's pretty much going to be it for. I guess we'll take a look at Patterson. He kind of developed a little bit. He's an 80 overall star because of the rookie of the year or kicker of the year award. Um, pretty tame, you know, very balanced, good accuracy and all that, but kick power is only 94. But that's going to be it for our very first rebuild of the Madden 24 season. I am praying that they fix the speed of this UI. It seems like it happens every year, so I imagine they will. Because this was actually kind of like really annoying to you know record how slow everything was and tedious every little movement was. Like everything when clicking into an option is like, not right here, but it's like four seconds delayed. I'm going to tell you when I'm going to do it. So I'm going to click right now. And look at how slow, like it's still not in every time. That's like six seconds or so. That's ridiculous. Please fix it. That's that's my biggest gri uh, grief right now. I, I mean, people were complaining about the servers being down for a couple hours at launch, but like it happens to the best of them, right? I wouldn't say that Madden is played as much as uh, GTA Online, but I remember when GTA Online released, like the whole first week it was, you know, messed up. So let alone an hour or two of, you know, Madden. Just fix the UI stuff, but... I hope, you know, you guys enjoyed this one. If you guys have an idea for what team you'd like to see next, let me know in the comment section below. As far as plans go for the rest of the week, uh, I'm thinking of at least two uploads for tomorrow. Probably a um, experiment video, which takes a bit of time because of simming. And then uh, probably Superstar Episode 2 for wide receiver Curtis Kennedy. And then I think I might start the Texans franchise on Thursday. I think that would be the plan. Uh, maybe throw a superstar in there on Thursday as well or some other type of video. I don't know. Um, but obviously that also comes down to if some big YouTuber doesn't, you know, steal. You know, I like, I, I'm not uh, nowhere near big, you know, right? Like 88K, whatever. I really appreciate you guys. But, uh, you know, when I think of big, I'm talking about people that are pulling like tens of thousands, almost like hundreds of thousands of the video, you know, views every video. As much as, like I said, I, you know, stand up to the big guy and, and post it anyways. That's not a realistic outlook. The alg algorithm is going to favor whoever's getting the views, obviously. So me doing a uh, franchise series on a team that a much bigger viewer-based YouTuber is doing is just dumb. And I have a lot of teams I like. Really want to do the Texans, but if someone else takes them, you know, before I actually post my first episode, I mean, it's just I got to do the smart thing. I apologize if you guys are really expecting, you know, these franchises especially the texans because the bears i'm locked in with so if someone else takes them it is what it is i have to because it's an online league i can't like rechange my team when everyone's locked in but got to do what i got to do right you know so uh, hopefully we'll be able to do a texans franchise if not there's other options could maybe even go with the packers maybe the uh the patriots or something but that's the plan anyways and hopefully we can stick to it thanks for watching if you guys enjoyed maybe leave a like subscribe if you're new if you're not new i really 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 appreciate your continued support uh on the channel as we're you know, getting close to 89K, almost 90K. Maybe get to that 100. Always wanted a silver play button. I mean, like, literally, I whenever I saw those things, when, you know, the first kind of YouTubers start off, I was like, oh, that's sick. I do think the old design is a little bit better for the play button than the new one, but I still take it. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video, which, once again, will be a plenty. But until next video, see ya.